of my favorite things to use in any classroom was children's literature as it relates to math. So I like to use picture books to introduce lessons, which is what I'm gonna do for you today. So we've been talking about place value, and I wanted to share with you one of my favorite books on place value. This is Place Value by David A. Adler, illustrated by Edward Miller. Now I will tell you that when I use these in practice, I don't actually sometimes read the whole book. Don't be afraid to use literature if you feel like you don't have enough time or you feel too rushed in your lesson. It's not that big of a deal. You can actually just pick and choose pages that you would like. Um, and what's great about this is that it encourages this uh, sense of feeling that math is related to reading, which it is, right? And also that uh, it excites children to spend some time reading about math. Again, we're trying to get them to figure out that the more time, the more practice they put into math, the better they're gonna get at it. So, um, these would just be a book that maybe I'd introduce, and then I'd tell my students, like, listen, it's in our classroom library, in the back of the classroom, whenever you're ready to take a look. One other thing I wanna assure you is that you don't have to buy books brand new. I'm gonna show you a screenshot here of where you can look on Amazon, to buy this book used. And what's great about this is sometimes I can even find library binding books for a dollar. And then you pay $3 for shipping and it's a perfectly acceptable book for your classroom. Remember, they're probably gonna get very used. Uh, so you'll notice that some of my books are paperback. If I can get a hardback book for cheap, I will absolutely do that any day over a soft paperback book just because they last longer over time. Also, don't forget about eBay. eBay is a great place to find um, slightly used books. Even things like Goodwills and secondhand stores in other states will sometimes sell on eBay and you can find exactly what you're looking for. So make sure that you're not, your default is not just to order it brand new. Um, we wanna make sure we can maximize the most of our money and get as many books possible for our classrooms. So let me share with you uh, this book, Place Value. What's super cute about this book is that we open up and it's these monkeys and they're cooking in the banana cafe. And it says, A is both a word and a letter. One is both a number and a digit. A is the first word in the sentence. A frog jumped onto my cupcake. A is the fifth letter in the word cupcake. One is the number in the sentence. We are number one. One is the second digit in the number 318. We write with letters. There are 26 letters in our alphabet. A, B, C, D, and I would even say at this point, can you say the letters with me? Say them. A, B, C, D, E. You get the picture all the way to Z, right? Count the letters in the word banana. Banana is a word with six letters. We write numbers with digits. There are 10 digits in our number system. And I would pause and say, do you know what the 10 digits are of the number system? Hmm, let's say them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Count the digits in the number 5,432. 5,432 is a number with four digits. Now, as you can see, what's cute about this book is they're making a colossal banana cupcake. And as we go through, um, it talks about how order is important with letters as well as with numbers. 216 and 621 have the same digits, but because their order is different, the numbers are different. The place of each digit in a number determines its value. And I would stop and say, does anybody know what the six in 216 represents? Six ones, good job. We've been talking about ones, tens, and hundreds in our class. You're rocking it. The six in 621 means six hundreds. And I love that on this page, they show that little place value chart here um, with all of their eggs. I think it's adorable. If we keep fast forwarding, you can see that we work into the thousands, which is great, into the 10,000s and the 100,000s on the next page. Again, don't be afraid to only pick and choose a couple of pages and let them explore the book further on their own. 
Then, if we look at page 20, it talks about a decimal point there, which is great. And then we even go into money. So really, when I'm thinking about this book, it could be used for anywhere from, I could even argue kindergarten up until third, maybe even fourth grade. Remember, everyone loves to be read to, so don't be afraid to use books to introduce your math lessons. Now, if you look at page 24, um, it talks about the Hindu Arabic system. So this is the page I'm gonna use for our class. The Hindu Arabic number system is based on 10. Why 10? Many people believe it's because we each have 10 fingers. Our number system may have started thousands of years ago when someone counted on his fingers. He reached 10 and made a mark on the ground to show he had counted on all his fingers. The mark on the ground meant 10. He continued to count. Each time he counted all his fingers, he made another mark. Each mark meant 10. So you remember when we were talking about other civilizations and other place values, here comes Hindu Arabic, which I think is really cool. The next page, once again, shows that the order of digits matters, right? You know that 132 is not the same number as 123, and 123 is not the same number as 321. I would even, with a first or second grade class, talk about what is the difference. This could be almost a warm-up activity. Then you can see they make the really huge cupcake, and then they talk about how many sprinkles they need and they have that huge number there. So then we go to the page where they talk about how many sprinkles they have on it. And the only thing I don't love about this is they could have written out the whole number, but this is also written for children. So um, the important thing is obviously we can show children that number and 329 trillion, that's a lot, even though we know that it's actually more than 329 tr trillion. So that's just a quick introduction to place value using this place value book by David A. Adler. Um, I'm gonna be sharing some other books with you uh, throughout the semester that I like, and I'm gonna introduce lessons that way so that you can kind of experience this as a student would experience in my classroom. Remember, the number one influence on how you are going to teach is how you were taught. So this is my way of infusing this into um, your experience of education from zero until now, and hopefully, um, this will be something that you choose to take away from this course. Most students really enjoy uh, the books that I use in class, and so this will be a way that you can experience those. I hope this has inspired you and you're ready to get some books for your future classroom.